you, Star Shines. Tangent Spinner here, Spinner of Tangents and Rants of Random. Back again with another Let's Read. We're continuing on with Web Mage today. Uh, last time in Chapter 2, ignore Merlin. He's got his bed over here in the background. Uh, last time in Chapter 2, uh, Raven's assassin cousins were coming after him. They took, and him and Melquire took shelter in, the, uh, in an art gallery where Ravern had was forced to not only bite off the tip of his pinky finger in order to cre to finish his, a uh, what amounted to a hail mary of a spell called burnt offerings where he made a doppelganger that he could use kind of like a like mental twin type shit but he had to tap into the primordial chaos force that let rest between the realms which is Really, really, really not a good idea. Imagine Harry Potter fiendifier, pretty much. Only he had to channel it through his own body into the doppelganger and a whole bunch of madness. But they managed to get the magical picture portal to work. And he managed to shove himself through with the last of his strength before he passed out from agony. So, that's where we left off. We are now... That was chapter two, yeah. We are now in chapter three. And look how much we have left to go. I think there are 27? There are 21 chapters in this, which means we are one-seventh of the way through. Uh, like I said, last chapter, well, last couple episodes, these will be shorter videos. I'm going to take my hair down because it's irritating me now. But um, these will be shorter episodes in the hopes that they stay in sync longer. There. <laughs> so... Without further ado, let's get this way. We'll try to keep it about halfway point on this, and then we'll call it an episode part one for chapter three. There we'll stop on that page. Oh yeah, there's a big space right there, so there's a time skip. So we'll go there. Okay, so chapter three. I don't remember what happened next, but I must have gotten lucky and fallen in the right direction because I woke up an hour later still among the living. My face was pressed into the ground, and the smell of crushed grass with, grass with just the faintest compost undertone of decay filled my nostrils. I lifted my head and found myself in another world. I lay on a rounded green hill next to a fairy circle made from crushed beer cans. Melquire sat beside me. I looked at his maimed finger, and guilt washed over me. Sorry about the hand, Mel. It's okay, boss. I understand. If that scrawny carcass of yours turned up without mine alongside it, your cousins would never believe they had the real thing. Even with your actual flesh providing the signature, they'd know something was up. It's common knowledge that you couldn't find your ass with both hands and a map without my help. You know what, Mel? Because of your recent service above and beyond the call of duty, I'm going to ignore that rather than erasing your hard drive and starting from scratch like I ought to. The banter helped keep my mind off the, how, how close I'd come to ju I'd just come to dying. Gosh, boss, you're all heart. I'm glad you think so, because I'm about to put you back to work. I can hardly wait, he replied. Your enthusiasm overwhelms me. First, let me see the finger. He gave me his hand, and I tapped the finger. Good. Melquire. Root access. Authorization code. Antigon. Root access granted. Left hand... Left hand slash pinky finger slash first knuckle dot source, I said. Terminate signal. Initiate recovery cycle. Run command. Run command. Root exit. Exiting root. Returning to normal operation. He let out a long sigh and the tension visibly drained out of him. Oh yeah. Thanks, boss. You're welcome. It doesn't give you the fingertip back, but it'll kill the pain and stop the bleeding. When we have a little leisure and a mainframe access, I'll write you a new one. I wish we could fix mine as easily. The pain, which seemed to have held itself in, in a, a, abeyance until that moment, returned then, as though speaking of the injury had conjured it up. My finger wasn't alone. I had an arrow crease, a couple of cracked ribs, and a myriad, a myriad of lesser strains and bruises, but it was the horrible throbbing of my right knee that led the rapidly rising symphony of agony. The scary thing was that I was still pretty shocky. I didn't want to think about how bad I was hurting once I came out of it. Let's move this along. Melquire, better living through chemistry. Execute. Executing. The web goblin's right index claw lengthened and sharpened, taper shaping itself into a hypodermic needle. 
While he was doing that, I unzipped the left wrist seal of my, of my jacket and pulled it up, bearing the flesh beneath. When I was ready, Melchior formed his hand into a gun and jabbed the claw into the exposed vein. When he brought his thumb down and sending morphine, then he brought his th thumb down, sending morphine shooting into my bloodstream. The dose was insanely high, enough to kill a human, and within seconds I could feel it taking hold. Let it just be said that morphine is not a fun drug to do, guys. Not from personal experience, but from uh, witnessing it. Um, the temporary high is not worth the come down, and the uh, overdosing is not worth it at all. Don't do drugs. Don't. Don't do injectable drugs if you're going to do any kind of drugs at all, at least, please. God, don't do drugs. Shame. <laughs> Much better, Mel. I might even live through the next step. The drug pulsed through my system, moving to the rhythm of my heart. It felt like liquid nitrogen, freezing out sensation. With each beat of the cool relief slid a little further through my veins. You'll have to open my pants from, an ankle, from ankle to hip. Then I'll need a splint. Some drawing was inevitable, inevitable while he dealt with the seams. I closed my eyes and let the morphine carry me away to a place where everything was quiet bliss. It was also pink. Not my favorite color, but I didn't feel like arguing. I'm not sure what pulled my awareness back to, uh, to the place I'd left my body, but when I opened my eyes, I found that my leg had been straightened out. I was glad to have missed that part bit. Mel sat on the grass beside my head, watching curiously as a short, gnarled woman with extremely broad shoulders arranged long strips of black, dried sinew and some old bicycle spokes around my leg. I was about to ask who she was when she pulled the bindings tight. Even through the morphine, it felt like someone had placed my knee in an electrical pencil, pencil sharpener. I decided everything had been better where it was pink, and went away again. I surfaced later in darkness. I lay on a low futon that had seen better days. A faint smell of old dust and mildew flavored the still air. I'd barely stirred before Mel appeared. A small wooden bowl clutched in his hands. Here, boss, drink this. The troll says it'll help with the pain. The troll? I sat bolt upright, adrenaline overriding pain. Calm down, Melquire said. Alan's not the kind of tr not that kind of troll. She's a vegetarian. Where did you find a vegetarian troll healer? I said, beginning to relax. We're under the hill in the picture. She made the beer can fairy ring. We're an awfully long way from the primary course of reality. It's a weird version of fairy, oriented around, uh, oriented around the detritus of urban sprawl and pollution instead of the Sylvian idyllicism. I don't know what goes on in the head of the artist who painted this gate, but I'd rather not meet his subconscious in a dark alley. It sounds bizarre, I said, taking the bowl. It was full of a dark green liquid with suds on top. It looked terrible and smelled worse, but the pain in my knee was coming back, and Melquire assured me the stuff wasn't toxic. I took a tentative sip. It actually tasted pretty good, something like bananas and cream. I knocked the rest of it back. My pat catalog of injuries quieted down almost immediately, and, I short and shortly I fell into a deep sleep. While I slept, I dreamed. I was in my dorm, playing around with a new spell. The basic idea had been suggested by something my cousin Larrick had said in a bar, at a bar one night that hurt even in sleep. We'd been good friends since childhood, but he was Morik's first cousin, and probably an enemy now. I called the spell Jurassic Gas. It was a hack, but most of my smell, spells are. I'm an off-the-cuff off sorcerer. I write good code, but I've always preferred quick and dirty to elegant. My real specialty is cracking unveiling other people's works. Nobody's code is perfect, and I have a talent for finding even the tiniest flaw and exploiting it. While that means, while that mean, bleh, what that means is that I've never met a security system I couldn't get around. It also means I'm a whiz-bang debugger, but that's a lot less fun and doesn't really interest me. My grandmother, on the other hand, finds it to be my primary redeeming feature. That's how I ended up with a mid-level school in the mid-level. Uh, uh, that's how I ended up at a mid-level school in a backwater reality. Lachesis wanted my talents as, as a systems analyst honed. She also said I needed to learn discipline. She'd started me out at MIT in one of the primary reality nodes, but there had been so much happening there that I hadn't really paid attention to classes and flunked out. Same thing happened in Carnegie Mellon, Mellon in a secondary node. Uh, I'm going to pause real quick so it doesn't skip, guys. Give me three, two, one. And we're back. So 
uh, Melon in a secondary note. When Lakisa signed me up for the U of M, she told me in no uncertain terms that the next step was a monastery school at the back end of beyond. They were the thought, uh, th these were the thoughts going through my head as I fine-tuned Jurassic Gas. I had the spell just about where I wanted it when Melchior chimed. New mail, he said, a request for visual. From who? Melchior shivered a bit. Atropos. I quickly reviewed my recent cracking. There'd been one or two forays into Atropos's demence, but only nibbles around the edges. I didn't think she'd had anything on me. Put her through. I replied, if you insist. His expression went far away. Contact, waiting from for a response from atropos.web. Lock, VTP link, in linking initiated. Melchior opened his eyes and mouth wide. Beams of light lanced out, green, blue, and red. But rather than coming together to make a picture as they normally did, the beam struck me full in the face. My vision fogged. The world seemed to go gold, and my stomach told me I was falling. Then, I was elsewhere. That's where we're going to stop it at this video, guys. Uh, there's a bit of a time skip thing, so I don't know if it's just him switching realities or him passing out or it's being a flashback happening there. But there are... Hold on, let me actually see real quick. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We're going to read another... There's... There... We're, we're going to read uh, one more page, actually, because I read two pages into a six-page chapter. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so we're continuing... Sorry, um, we'll end, we'll end there, yeah. The space was a, a perfect sphere, perhaps 30 feet in diameter, and enclosed by walls of crystal. Outside, the primal stuff of chaos tumbled and foamed. It looked like a million different colors of dye, all being spun in a blender, except that they never mixed, each maintaining its own color as it twisted through and around the others. I reached toward the nearest arc of crystal, wanting to reassure myself it would keep the chaos on the other side. My arms seemed to move in slow motion, and I realized I was suspended in a thick, clear fluid. Since I didn't seem to have any, be having any trouble breathing, this was something of a shock. I'm so glad you could come, the voice from behind me said, was cool and pure, inhumanly so. I turned my head and found myself looking into the eyes of fate. Floating a few feet away was Atropos. I've always had trouble describing my grandmother and her sisters. Oh, the details are there. They're uniformly beautiful, nearly identical in basic appearance. Each is tall and slender with ice-white skin, thick black hair, and fine bones. But somehow these things pale in, in, into insignificance besides their eyes. Clotho, Clotho is the easiest to face. She's the spinner of destiny, taking the raw stuff of chaos and drawing it into the strands that define lives. She's first and foremost a creator, and there's a vitality to their features that speaks of a love for all things. But it doesn't touch the eyes of fate. My grandmother, Lachesis, partakes of some of the same dictomy. She measures out the lifelines, giving one person a span of a hundred years and another a mere three and ten. The same basic features that look warm and inviting on Clotho are stern and austere on my grandmother, and again, the eyes are somehow dominant and out of place. Only Atropos, the cutter of threads, matches her eyes, and it's a likeness that invariably sends nervous shivers along my spine. There's no hint of human emotion in the eyes of fate. They are eyes in which you can see the knowledge of every single thing you've ever done or thought of doing. Every secret fear that lurks in the shadows of your heart, every petty jealousy, every noble ambition, becomes just another data point in fate's calculation of your destiny. I was lost in those eyes. Normally, when I'm going to deal with one of the fates, I have a chance to brace myself. This time, I met Atropos's gaze all unprepared, all unprepared. It was the most frightening experience of my life. I have no idea how long she held me, pinned like a butterfly in a specimen case, but eventually she chose to blink, releasing me. For several minutes, all I could do was breathe. Inhaling and exhaling seemed to take enormous effort. Atropos waited patiently until I had almost recovered. That's where we're going to stop. Uh, we'll continue part two as soon as possible. I'll probably start filming after I finish editing and post this one, just so I have 
have it ready to go for you guys, all right? We're getting into it. We're finally going to find out. Well, we already know what the spell is, but we're finally going to find out the conversation that went on between her and Rayburn. All right. So stay tuned. Uh, Tangent's going to spin on out of here. Uh, again, it's going to start filming this pretty much immediately. So you have that to look forward to anyways. Like, comment, subscribe, dislike, complain, block, I don't know. Anything you guys want to do. Y'all know how YouTube works. Okay. So like I said, uh, Tangent's going to spin on out. And remember, guys, you're all, you're all my sunshines, okay?